Hello and welcome to the Mal and Johnny show. I'm exhausted. I'm totally exhausted. <laughs> You're not good. <laughs> Johnny, well, you know what it's like. It's like, um, so I, I went to do a gig on Tuesday, didn't I? And that London, remember we talked about it last week. Well, if you will go into England, I, know. I mean, you know. <laughs> Passport a time. foreign land. <laughs> but it, it was a great, it was a really fantastic venue. It was a fantastic venue. Yeah. This place called All Souls Langham Place. Uh, down, right. I, I suppose it's the crypt, really, isn't it? But it, it doesn't look like a crypt. Where's Langham Place? I can't quite place it. So you know where the BBC building is in that London? You know the, the big one that's on. The yes, place? yes, off Bond. That's not far from Baker Street. Yeah. So it's this. It's the actual church next door. That if you remember, Radio One had all of their DJs <laughs> sitting there. On the very first yeah. day of Radio One, there's just like an iconic picture, which we which we recreated with the lads. We that was that. 1967, from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just we were both just boys then, Johnny. Just, just. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, it, but it, it's it's a great venue, but it's downstairs and the lift didn't work. Yeah. Come oh, lovely. And you got to carry your gear down, did you? And we had to bring everything because it because we were you know we were trying to put on a show, so we had to bring in the lights, the PA. The, oh. you, could, you bring a projector these days, Johnny, to project onto the onto the screen. Yeah, yeah. So like it's like a bit more like a TV show. So yeah, we got there. Actually, to be honest, the, the trip up wasn't too bad. Um, some friends of mine, uh, Rod Lloyd, he owns a, a company called Low Cost Vans. And right. We all need friends in this world, Johnny. Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Especially in our business, we do. A friend, and a friend in need, as they always say, a friend in need is a blinking nuisance. Anyway, I rang him and said, have, uh, you, have you got a van? We could, yes, you can borrow a van. Lovely van. So it's a nice van, five seats, lots of room for the gear, packed up, getting nice and early. I thought, you know, you always want to build in a bit of time when you go to London, don't you? Because you never know if you're going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we got the two hours early, so we were all, we were all set up by five o'clock. Uh, Where did you park? Oh, ah, now that's clever because the church also is like a place. I've got to deal with another church, which has got a car park. Just ten, <laughs> ten, so it's fantastic. So Dave, our driver, Dave, we had, yeah. Dave came to drive us. Uh, so he parked, took the van away. We parked up and um, and then unloaded the gear, put the gear up. So we're all ready to go. But it, but then now then this is the the thing, and I'm going to be writing about this on my blog. I think I've got her permission to talk about it. A lady's name called Catherine, right? Catherine's right. from the Isle of Man, and um, she she lives in a wheelchair. She she can't really walk, but she yeah, yeah. Looks, is in a wheelchair. You know what? I'm not sure about you. I'm a I'm a bit of a fair weather everything, Johnny. You know, if it if it's outside, I think, oh, I'm not going to go for a walk or a run. I just it's a bit too much, you know. And if catching catching a bus, catching so she came from the Isle of Man in her wheelchair to my concert, knowing that the lift, wow. had, knowing that the lift had broken, and um, knowing that we'd have to find a. Way, and we did. We we carried her down. We carried her back out the gate. And she, but she's brilliant. And then I said, so where you, where are you staying? Are you staying locally? She said, no, I'm, I'm off down to um. Where was it? It was Bromley. I said, are you going to get there? She's like, I don't know. I've never been to London before. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, funny enough, I was speaking to somebody else the other day about this, but somebody who's a bit infirm. I said, the thing is, you can do anything these days. I said, I was on a ship once and this guy came on and it was a small ship. It was that lovely yacht I used to do, right? Oh, yeah. And he came on in a wheelchair because he had no legs, okay? Mm. But then he was going around the, the decks on a skateboard. <laughs> Wow. Because he could do that, he yes. could sit on his skin. He was going around. The, I thought this is brilliant. And the same week, the the drummer from Def Leppard got on. He had one yeah. arm, and he carried on playing. He had didn't that he? Yes, he had yeah, yeah, he did. He said he carried on playing. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say a joke, but I thought no, better no, not. No, better not. Bad taste. No, no. No. I, I was going to say it costs an arm and a leg to come on the ship, but I didn't. You didn't because you're, you're not that type of guy. Well, we had a guy in Swansea. They made me walk the flank. Oh, well, we had this guy, we had this guy <laughs> no, in Swansea. But they, they, they are fantastic, these people, because they try it and they go anywhere, you know, because you can these days. It's a, it's a mental thing, you know, and, and like, I'm in awe of her. I am. She's she's like a heroine to me. We're inspirational. She made me think, why am I complaining? Because I was complaining a lot on Tuesday, i got to tell you, all the gear and all that. I was complaining <laughs> even, right. even more driving back, John. Because they always do yeah. the motorway work, don't they, in the middle of the night? Oh, they went and shut the motorway, did they? Twice. You had to go all around Newport and all, the, all no, that lark as well. That's the thing, isn't it? You know, they say, you know, come off here, and then like you're looking for the diversion signs, and either somebody's nicked them or they haven't put them up. Oh, oh Johnny murder. got lost. We went, we went <laughs> recorded an interchange three times. We thought that can't be yeah. right. It's like there must, there was no signs, Johnny, you know, at two o'clock in the morning. So got back at half past four. Yesterday yeah. and oh, like I was 
fit for nothing. Fit for nothing, Johnny. Fit for nothing. I tell you what, did you did you use the sat nav? Because I remember coming back from some gig in Clacton, yeah. and I think there was a lot of roadworks on the M4. Same thing. Yeah. So I put the sat nav in, and it was going to take me a different way. I ended up in the car back of Heathrow. <laughs> oh <laughs> it's man, it is unbelievable. But it just, I, you know, it just proved to me that actually a lot of what we can't do uh, isn't our bodies because. Catherine proves that a lot of it is, oh, it's, it's, is up here, up, yeah. you know, That's and we, right. we need to get that right because nothing will stop her. You know, she keeps no. the, the first. I can't remember the first time I met Catherine. I think she used to listen to the late night show and then she started listening to the music. So she's was, a very good fan. I wouldn't knock that. No, but I do that. Come that distance, we, even if they're not infirm. I was <laughs> doing a gig at Gwyn Hall, right? Doing a Gwyn Hall, and yeah. Uh, she, Catherine, came, I said, what are you doing here? She said, oh, well, I heard you were doing a concert. So I came to London and thought I'd come down on the train. So she got a taxi from the station in Neath yeah. to uh, the Gwyn Hall. And the guy's asking questions because he's, he's from Neath and he's on a chat. And she, she, he said, well, she said, what, are you, what are you doing here? She said, I've come to see Mal Pope in concert. He said, you've come all the way to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which I thought was. Uh, Do you know what, though? See, I mean, health is everything, isn't it, Mal? Let's be fair. Mm-hmm. I, I've got to tell you this story. I went to the doctors yesterday because oh. I'd had a blood test a week previously. Yeah. And it was all because I, I, I was breathing very shallowly. I don't know why. Right. I wasn't out of breath, but I was fr- forgetting to breathe before I spoke. Mm-hmm. So I was running out of breath. I thought, there's something wrong here. Mm-hmm. So I went to the doctor and she took blood tests, okay? Right. And then I had to go yesterday for the, for the results. So I go in and she, I said, what did you test me for? She said, heart failure. Oh. I said, what? <laughs> she said, well, because... So I said, oh, okay. How did it turn out? She said, well, if it, whatever this enzyme they have to find, it has to be under 400, okay? Right. yeah. To be not it. She said, you know what yours was? I said, no. She said, 28. <laughs> Good. I said I'm fitter than you. <laughs> you probably are, Johnny. You probably are. This, this, this clean living, clean, clear conscience, and lots of exercise. Tap dancing, I do a bit of the yells. So how did the show go? So the show, the show go. So the show. Good? Well, I, it's not for me to say, Johnny. It's not for me to say. But um, they didn't throw anything hard. So um, I got yeah. some support from LCV Vans. So they gave me a van. Uh, Swansea Building yeah. Society gave us some money to put towards the cost so thanks to the Swansea Building Society right. and then Pender and Whiskey gave us all miniatures little miniature bottles I should have had one now so you could show on screen um, yeah. miniature bottles so I thought I'm not going to be cool Johnny because a lot of people were coming I hadn't seen for a long time and I'll come back to them in a minute so I thought I'm not going to be cool sit backstage you know waiting for everybody to come in and walk out and go I, so I was at yeah. the door you know checking everybody's tickets so I have a little chat with everybody and then on the, on the way <laughs> you're out you're working in the room I was on the way out I was giving everybody their bottle of Pendarian whiskey I, 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 and I think it was probably a bit mean of me because at the beginning of the show I, I showed them a bottle of Pendarian and said you don't get this until the end of the show we didn't have any walkouts <laughs> everybody wanted so it you better not walk out. Yeah. but there was there were people that I hadn't seen for 40 years, maybe even longer. Good God. And yeah. uh, there was one lady in particular, Jill, um, and she and her husband, Steve, had, had been like my mentors. He, he, Steve had been the guy who told Elton John to stop writing that rubbish and he writes some proper songs and then he produced his album right. and then he was he was part of that, you know, that whole circle for a number of years and he became my sort of friend and manager. And I hadn't seen Jill for 40-odd years. And um, she walked in and I, I burst into tears. I said, it was weird because weird, it was like... Sh- that family was such a big part of my life growing up. So it, was, yeah, yeah. it started like that and went downhill, you know. So I, <laughs> I stood at the, end of the start of the second half and said, it's like being at my own funeral. I got school friends, I got family. <laughs> Did you have the band with you as well? No, but what I do, see, I bring the video. I bring the video and, and, and I remix the video without the voice and without the guitar or without the piano. And then I play, yeah. play along. I was a bit worried at first it was going to be a bit karaoke. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but I. Think but you're playing live on your guitar. Playing live it? on the guitar, singing live, playing the piano live, so all that. And then I brought, I also brought up Steve Bosmo. You know Steve. Yeah, you know Steve. Oh, Steve's great. Steve's a great singer, yeah. and he's got a massive Chinese-based fan fan base. So Never. Th- there were a lot of people there, for, you know, who came to see just to see Steve, who's doing three or four songs, who are his Chinese fan base. And they, they've got it like a website and they send him yeah. pictures. And, and then they gave me a picture that they drawn, special calligraphy. In fact, I've got it here somewhere. Hold on. Let me show it to you. Hold on. I'm not, just to, I don't really think I'm making this up. Now then, I'm not quite sure which way round it goes. 
Uh, but is that an angle? Yeah, I guess it. I guess it. Yeah, yeah. It it's like Chinese either, right there. It's either that or that, and it means good luck. Yeah, it means a lot of good luck. Oh, to wow. Me. Hey, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all, Johnny. If, as That's the song right. says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the, I had a funny story the other day. So if it wasn't for the pickpockets, I wouldn't have any sex life at all. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who said that. Anyway, change the subject. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the thing with Steve, yeah. that thing he did in, when he was playing Jesus Christ, his version of the, the Gethsemane oh. is second to none. It blows my mind. It's stunning. And I mean, it's and he had the cheek to say to me, he's not an actor. Well, have a look at him doing that. Yeah. He's, if he's not an actor, neither is Richard Burton. <laughs> I mean, he was fantastic. Yeah. And at long last, yeah. I, I've been nudging him and nudging him because he's done lots of things. He, you know, obviously, that show, and he did a couple of other shows, and then he did yeah. the stories, uh, and finally he's getting around to doing his own material. But, uh, but he's a great storyteller. Uh, and yeah. I think the reason why they were, the band that he was in was called The Stories because when they used to be in the van back of Fort London every week, they'd just tell story after story after story, you know. But he's yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Played, he played with everybody. Do have we interviewed him? Have we interviewed him? I can't remember if we. I don't him. think we have. No, oh, not on this. We haven't. No, he, I've been with him with you a few times, yeah. but you know, get him on. We get him do, on because he, his stories, like you know, meeting Bob Dylan when he was with the Printers Trust in front of one hundred and sixty thousand people, and yeah, going, yeah, going yeah, the world because he was offered to go to Broadway and he turned it turned down. It down and turned it down. We'll ask him why. We'll ask him why. Uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't have turned it down. No. I'd have been there. Mind you, having said that, <laughs> he's, he's got the big one at the moment this weekend. Well, actually, t it's uh, Friday on Friday, March the first. Carney Gummery. He's got a song in Carney Gummery. Oh, right. I did that once years ago. Did you? Did you? Uh, Alwyn and I wrote a song, and I think he came second. I forget what it was called. No, it was all about Dennis Dinsett and Beach. There was two people walking along the beach together. Wow. I'll have to ask Alwyn and dig it out. Yeah, no, lovely. So, yeah. Have you said, have you done one for Carnegie Gumbly? I have in the past. I've done a couple in the past. Uh, always a good night out. And uh, I've, yeah, been, yeah. I've been invited tomorrow as a VIP. Swansea yeah, Arena. Yeah, see. You're a VIP. <laughs> the great thing is, you know, you, you worry about maybe having a glass of wine or not. Well, because it's in Swansea yeah. and I've got my bus pass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a straight road from Mumbles to the Swansea Arena. I'd be, I'd be home in 10 minutes if I catch the right bus. <laughs> Do you know what, though? The bus is over here. I mean, if you go to Spain, like yeah. Malaga, yeah. the bus service is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you buy a little card and yeah. it's like 70 pence to go anywhere and you just jump on and every five minutes there's a bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But over, like I live in Wenbo, there's one, one every hour here to town. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And if I want to go by train, i got to go to Dennis Post and park the car. I mean, yeah. our system is awful, but then it's not run by the government. Over there, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same. It's the same. You've got to, you've got, we used to go to Holland a lot because they had family living in Utrecht, Utrecht. Oh, and um, Utrecht. you know so you've got we just try and go from Cardiff Airport which is you know it's the least you can park yeah. up and you know it takes you three hours to get there but it's, you know it's worth you save yourself three hours the other end and um, you know get off the get off the plane catch a train straight there yeah. and there's a bus waiting to take you to where you want I mean you know what's gone oh, know. what's gone wrong with the country Johnny what's gone wrong Oh, well, there we are, you see. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's Everything's it. been <laughs> hasn't been nationalised. They sold everything oh, off. Yeah. You, every day so now the water doesn't work. The railway doesn't work. It, you know, it was going to be great to sell it. Uh, Look, when when it's not owned by the government, yeah. it's they're after them. It's like how can I say it? It's all about like. Like earning money, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So when it's when it's a when it's a national thing like that, they nationalised the post office. Mm. They're all going through hell now because they're not nationalised. Yeah. I don't think everything should be nationalised, but I think basic things like your transport, your water, yeah, your, yeah, your, you know, it should be. You know what I mean? So well, what do you think? Well, they're all monopolies, aren't they? You know, you need they're you know, monopolies. That's you know, right. So you can't, you know, you've only got one wire coming to your house for electricity. Yeah. Why even yeah. have five different com companies offering different prices? How does that work? Oh. You know, because that's like... Oh, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad, nuts. It's I mean, mad. Phone and, you know, train light. Anyway, don't get us started. Don't get us started. No, 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 sorry. Um, you can, you've got to have a mortgage to go on a train to London now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at this gig now on, th on Tuesday, um, yeah. I'm getting support from quite a lot on radio stations, you know, quite, you know, like Boom Radio. Are you listening to Boom Radio yet? No, I'm not listening to Boom. Is that the same as the Boom company makes films? No, Boom. no, Boom oh, is it's different. It's uh, it's set up during during COVID, and it's basically a lot of them, a lot of the DJs who maybe got overlooked. You know, people like David Hamilton, Diddy David Hamilton. Oh, Diddy David and all them. Yeah, yeah. I used to love yeah. him. Yeah, uh, Graham Dean. It's a lot of the capital. Nicky Horn, Graham Dean, uh, David Hamilton, and so they set up a, a 
radio station called Boom. It's, it's, on, it's on the internet, but it's on DAB as well. And basically, yeah, yeah. Radio 2 have lost like half a million, 600,000 listeners, and Boom have picked up half a million, 600,000 listeners. Well, I tell you what, I don't know who's running the BBC in London, right? Mm-hmm. Steve Wright, who had the highest ratings, mm-hmm. and everybody loved him. We did love him. I know they're saying how wonderful he was, yeah. and they blinking sacked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. And then the woman who did it had the audacity to get and eulogise and how good he was and how fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so why get rid of the guy? Don't yeah. understand. Understand it? No, no, no. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, they're trying to get a younger audience. Yeah, yeah. well, they don't listen younger to... audiences. They don't, they listen, don't to... listen to the wireless. They don't. They don't. They just got. They, they got this playlist. They got the, yeah, 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 yeah. Got the TikTok. They got the. They got the Facebook. They got oh, yeah. No, they got I, anyway, I mean, they had Jimmy Young till he was ninety. Yeah, <laughs> but Jimmy Young yeah. was still on there. Terry Wogan going, until he was. You know, What's t- Terry Wogan? They, they eulogise about him. They got his Wogan house. Yeah, you know. Yeah, which but they, now they, Steve they, Wright was a great. A great broadcaster. He started on Radio 1 and he went right through mm-hmm. for 40 years and he was brilliant. And he had all these characters used to come on. You know, everyone called them um, Ask Elvis. Did you remember that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was so, some fellow doing an impression of Elvis and asked him questions. It was so funny. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Anyway, Angry. Mr. Angry. Do you Sorry. remember Mr. Angry? He was angry. Oh, Mr. Me. Angry. Yeah. yeah. What? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. All that. <laughs> it was brilliant. I, what was so what was oh, funny? Because right. I, you know, because it's my 50th anniversary. Did I mention that? Anyway, you know, so yeah, 50 years ago, I was it twice. I was, it was, that's where it was. It was the, and the studio I was in has been knocked down, I'm sure. But, you know, it was just funny yeah. being just across the road from going there. And then, and then yeah. one of the, the, the new song, which we haven't really talked much about, Letting You Down. I don't like to talk about my own records. <laughs> you know that. Uh, no, you're very, you're very oh, no, no, it's you, you, have to, you have to prize the information. But I recorded that in Oxford Circus, not in the circus, obviously not. But um, George yeah. Martin said that this fantastic studio upstairs in uh, yeah. Oxford Circus, above Dorothy Perkins, I think it was, and um, oh, so there, so there was just like it was. It was very emotional, very, very. Well, yeah, emotional. yeah, yeah. Very it's it's funny though. I go to London now, and it's all changed. I mean, mm. I used to go down Denmark Street, uh, and then all the, as you know, all the the publishers were down there, and yeah. you go to the pub, and all the songwriters would be in there. And it was a great vibe in the old days down there. Yeah, great vibe yeah. because people are making stuff in their bedrooms now, mate, like yeah, you. Yeah. Are you sure? It's not my fault. They don't need to go to big studios no, anymore. No. But in a way, it's a shame because the camaraderie was there. You'd walk in, all the band would be there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. The Back in singer, remember the Lady Birds? Oh yeah, they, the they used to do all the back ends. It was uh, Maggie Stredder, the one with the glasses. I always remember it, and she did them all. She made, yeah. she was making a fortune. She'd be dashing about the West End. She'd do three sessions a day. Goodness me, goodness me. She was only more than the singer. She was. <laughs> <laughs> everybody earns more than the singer, Johnny. Everybody I does. Know, yeah. uh, no, so it was a good. It was a good thing, um, and I think I've got another couple of gigs lined up from it. So that's that's well, nice. very nice. I'm very try nice. and go back and forth to London, maybe every you know. Four, four weeks every six weeks doing gig. Did you make any money out of it? No, Did you make a few quid for lost yourself? A, lost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about the money. Like Lonnie Donaghan just said to me once, I was doing a gig somewhere in London and I had to travel the next morning, overnight yeah. to get up to work with him in real life. He said, where were you last night? I, said, I was in London. I, said, I was doing a show in the Grosvenor House. He said, you're either skint or you're stage struck. Which is it? <laughs> <laughs> he said, probably the both. 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 Well, well, you're not, yeah. well, he might still be skinned, but he's still stage struck, which is great. He still stage yeah. struck. Never give yeah. in. Because we're, we're looking forward to it. We're, we're with Mike Reed in, uh, in July, is it? We're, oh, yeah, give me a bit of that. No, then, I want to ask you a question. Come on. Uh, the sound system, do I need to take my sound gear because no, I, I'll no. be using my backing tracks? Everything will be built in. Everything's built in. Yeah, just need to give, oh, you, that's great. give you tracks to the um, to the sound engineer. So they'd be fab. You'd be oh, fab. fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to take yeah. your lights, PA, stage in. No. <laughs> Because you know me, I always turn up with the You PA. do. It's like that time you came at Christmas when my PA was too small. He said, hang on, I got one in the boot. <laughs> Let's put a couple of speakers up here. <laughs> All right, man. So uh, any, any plans, anything for the weekend, sir? Any, anything? Uh, it was my anniversary tomorrow. Oh. On St. David's Day. Oh, that's... 39 years we've been together. Oh, congratulations <laughs> to the... In fact, they rang us from um, s oh, two weeks ago, I think I told you. We had to go down to talk to um, Penhounda because yeah. we're the, the golden couple apparently we've been together for so long you know Fantastic. and they found clips of me singing and with Alwyn and that you know yeah. so we're going out tomorrow night but tonight we, 
were going to go tomorrow night, but it's St. David's Day, which, so everywhere was packed. Yeah. So we're going out tonight instead. Fantastic. So we'll go for a nice meal tonight. Congratulations. Well, we're all we're all yeah. very, very delighted. And, and uh, oh, of yeah. course, she deserves a medal. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, putting up with me, singing and dancing all over the place. <laughs> oh, she always smiles every time you, you go off on one of your antics. I've always seen her look at her face and she's going, oh, he's again. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, well, um, uh, God willing, we'll see you next week. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. I've got lots of stuff Glad to put went well. Yeah. I'll let you know how my evening went and uh, we'll see what we can talk about next week. All right, boy, you take care. Lots well, of I've got to start in July. I've got to start, no, in June. I've got to start in the workshop on Toy Mike Trev. Oh, fantastic. So you've got the dates in. That's great. So they, yeah, they, yeah, it's in, it's like, yes, two weeks we're working on it. Fantastic. So hopefully this will be the last workshop before it goes Life. on tour. that would be great, won't it? Fantastic. All right, we wish you well for yeah. that. We'll keep in touch then, and I'll see you soon. OK, mate. All Have right. a good one. It's uh, from East Kapai and from Johnny Cheetah. It's all about. Ta-da. <laughs>